Brian Minor Gig Log episode 11. Check this out, man. My hair is starting to finally grow a little farther. I mean, I think it was up here before. It's still ridiculous looking, I know. But anyway, it's getting better. Once it gets to about here, right about here, I'll just cut it and it'll all be gray and you guys can stop making fun of me. Well, you can still make fun of me if you want, but I'm going to do four gigs in this gig log and then maybe next week I'll have time to do another four because I'm like eight shows behind and after this weekend it'll be like 10 so I'm trying to get caught up here so we're gonna blast through some of these vlog videos by the way I understand okay some of you make a night of this you know you get together you sit and you watch my gig log on the TV and I've done that too I didn't realize because everything's on my phone I, I see things on my my cell phone and it's a tiny screen you know you flip it sideways and it's still just kind of whatever but when you put me on a 52 inch or a big tv i did that in my living room once and i was like whoa i was shocked i was like man i don't know if i want people seeing me that damn close you know i was like maybe i should back up but anyway i apologize for nose hairs boogers whatever might be sticking out of my nose gray eyebrow hair i don't know i apologize for being gross Okay, and all up in your living room and in your face. But thanks for being here. Let's get on with the gig log. Uh, we're gonna start with Pender, Nebraska. This is what I edited together for you. I'll watch it with you. And if I see anything I wanna talk about, I'll stop it and we'll chat. But here is Brian Meyer Gig Log, episode 11. Dirt Road 1 on the move. Fucking funny, dude. That's all there is to it. You guys leave more shit on in vehicles than my kids do. <laughs> okay, we got one sock sitting here in the cooler. <laughs> I know, I gotta get some ice. Throw the sock in the trash. Okay. <laughs> Is this the same two liter, Roger? <laughs> nice and flat for you. <laughs> Take this swig. Can I have a drink? Can I have a drink of it, Roger? <laughs> Stop somewhere. Well, McDonald's is hiring out here, so I can always get a job. I'm gonna have my gig log. Episode 11. You gonna do some driving, Bobby? Yeah, I thought I'd try it. All right. I'm kind of nervous. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know why, but I am. Where are we? Anybody know? No clue. Halfway? Close to Des Moines. Okay. Des Moines. We're, we're at Adventureland. Come on over to Adventureland. Uh, and that looked like they're open. Adventureland Park is now <laughs> is now closed. <laughs> You're doing a great job, Bobby. Ah, yeah, ah, boy, drive a goddamn bus. <laughs> oh, I felt a little nervous, but I feel okay. <laughs> We're an Iowa band, so we do a lot of flat land travel, Nebraska flat. You know what I mean? So uh, Iowa flat, tons of Casey's though. We should be sponsored by Casey's. Some of my favorite things about traveling in this band is stopping at gas stations. I just like to look around. They're fun. I don't know. It's a it's a weird thing. Every gas station I pass on the highway that I don't go to, I feel like I missed out on something. You know what town we're in? I don't. A, a dare. One that I'm gonna poop in. A -A -A <laughs> okay. It smells like wet dog out here. I'll tell you that. What the fuck? That's got pickles on it. That ain't right. Hey, don't be a curmudgeon, Jerry. Okay. Let me explain the curmudgeon thing. All right. We had so much fun with that. Bobby, our drummer, <laughs> he'd be like, oh, yeah, that's a curmudgeon. Quit being a curmudgeon. He used the word curmudgeon. And I don't know if I've heard that since, you know, hanging around with my great grandmother. But we Googled the word. We wanted to know what it actually was. What is a curmudgeon uh, that Bobby keeps calling people? And we Googled it and it said, well, let's see. Let's see what it says. I'll do it right here on my phone. Let's see. Define curmudgeon. Here we go. Sure. Here's what the internet says. If you call someone a curmudgeon, you do not like them because they are mean or bad tempered. Old fashioned disapproval. <laughs> Old fashioned disapproval. Anyway, that's what we're joking about here. That's why I said, don't be such a curmudgeon. Uh, one of Bobby's favorite phrases. And and I think that since he uses that and we're aware of it now and we've defined it, he'll stop using it. And that sucks because it's so funny when he says it. Here we go. Yep, yep. Ah. Oh. So we're going to stop and take a picture with the Nebraska sign. This was all 
Wyatt's idea. So suck your bellies in, fellas. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it in a good mirror sometime. You guys, he saw him. All right, we want to go belly up. I mean, we don't <laughs> want our fucking shorts and shit By in the there. By the time he gets here, the gig will be over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we you heard that. I specifically said bellies up. So, like, from here up, don't be getting our shoes, our dad's shoes, and our socks and stuff, because we're all dressed like idiots at this point. We are not rock stars or even remotely caring what people think of us at this time. So when we stopped to take a picture, we thought, well, we have cool shirts and I have my sunglasses on. So maybe this picture could look cool just if you take a picture from here up and then have the sign behind us. But what does Roger do? He takes a picture of us from the feet all the way up and we look absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, he's not a photographer. He's a light guy. <laughs> How many miles are we away? We are three miles away. Yeah, I think it's a goddamn water tower over there. Yeah. It's coming down now. What's the population of Pender? I don't know. Yeah. There's one gas station. Oh, no shit. One gas station. Yep. Where are we at, Bobby? Yeah. Where are we at? We're in Pender, Nebraska, but uh, we're just trying to seek out that damn stage. Oh, Jesus. Here we go, fellas. Oh my God, they still have the fucking tractor attached to it. Jesus, chair. Jesus, chair. Chair takes us right there. Dude, they're gonna leave the semis attached to them. <laughs> no, no. Oh yeah, they are. Well, there are two of them at least. Oh my God, what is... Okay. I can fry it. Oh boy. You excited, Roger? Okay, man. Two trailers course but it ended up being really cool i mean if you do two of them together it makes a pretty cool stage although how do you get up on them and how do you get off of them that's always the the battle especially in cowboy boots look at this it's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of width right here man yeah we're good that's we're good of... dude just leave the bus right here too you think i wish there was something better than walking up these fucking things yeah I say we leave the bus and trailer right there. Wouldn't hurt nothing, I don't think. Hell no. Then we'd be right by our dressing area and stuff, yeah. I know. It's thundering right now, dude. Gowza. Bob, would you like a, a cord light? No. So I'm hanging out on the bus. I uh, just had one of the best pulled pork sandwiches and a beef, barbecue beef sandwich. I'm buttoning in here for a second. All right. Uh, I ain't lying. Look at that. You can see that's like sli thick sliced beef right there in that sandwich. Here, Pender, delicious. So chilling on the bus here, waiting to I'm waiting to find out if it's gonna rain. That's basically what's up. So it sprinkled a bit, rained a little bit. We can't let them trailer beds get wet, you know. Out of it. So we're trying to see what happens here to, before we make our final decision. If it rains, we're making big decisions. So guess what? It rained like crazy. <laughs> Several hours before we even started setting up. And, and Jerry, I have to hand it to him, man. It was clear, pretty much. I mean, there were some clouds. He was like, we're not getting anything out of the trailer for another hour at least and we're gonna wait this thing out and see what happens and i was like Psh, we could start we could start setting up it ain't gonna rain even the town people in pender were saying hey, it doesn't rain here it never rains here uh the bank across the street so we were out in the street you know doing like a street fest thing there and there was a bank across the street giving away their swag stuff with their bank name on it right and i was over there they had free ice cream so i went over there bobby went over there i got some free ice cream and uh one of their little spatula spoons or whatever that said their bank name <laughs> but they also were giving away rain gauges that had their name on it so i was thinking i don't see that so much back home where they're giving away swag you know you have koozies keychains things like this but rain gauges luckily it rained just for a little bit and then it cleared up but there was always the chance over our head man we had to make a decision whether to set up and try and risk it or whatever but hey it ended up working out just barely but again i have to hand it to jerry he's a smart cookie man he can kind of he has pretty good intuition about stuff damn them sandwiches were good yeah. 
Which one are you going into? Whatever one's available, homie. Peter's getting a ride to uh, the hotel. Pender, Nebraska. Nebraska air smells clean, fresh. Crossroads Lodge. There it is. We're on Earl Street and Fourth. Try to remember that. Earl Street and Fourth. What number? Uh, we got three. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What I'm at. I have the presidential suite. I don't know whichever one it is. I'm gonna tear it up. Fucking these bugs all over the mirror. Yeah, I don't know what them, but gnats, fruit flies, I don't, them things were, I mean, here, I'll let this roll a little bit. I mean, you can see what they are. They're all over the mirror. I, I couldn't, I couldn't understand what was going on there. But anyway, it was like a little murder hotel. They put us up. They gave us three rooms and I mean, they're little two beds and a bathroom. That's it. You know, little hotel rooms, outside access like that. You can see. But my carpet was nasty. It was it was okay. I mean, I would give it like two stars. But see, being in a band, I'd give it, it's almost like a four-star hotel to me because it's a place to sleep, right? And it's free. So, psh, whatever. Yeah. Here's our shuttle. <laughs> it was a heart attack. No, I, I got to sit in that thing. I was actually picking up the table. So this is where it gets kind of strange because as I'm watching this with you guys, actually, you know, you see the fireworks, you see everybody watching them and stuff. Actually, I get like a really lonely feeling when I see that because I was by myself. My wife wasn't with me. My kids weren't with me. I was all the way in Pender, Nebraska, and, you know, they're doing their street fest. This is well before the 4th of July, though, but still, I just kind of missed my wife and my family I, I just kind of wish that they could have been there i mean i wish we lived in pender i guess but that was quite a haul and my wife didn't go to that show and i, I don't know i was actually standing there watching from the stage like that feeling kind of lonely and i guess that's part of the gig sometimes you know to not feel at home sometimes you're somewhere else so anyway it just made me miss home what's great about these kind of gigs you know because you're doing a street fest in a small town and you know that means that means your neighbors the people that you know from the farm down the way or whatever all these people know each other i guarantee all them people right there they all know each other and somebody's aunt is gonna get drunk and dance on the table and somebody's cousin is gonna get drunk and do whatever you know what i mean so th they're all gonna pay the price monday it's gonna be like do you see what Susie was wearing? I knew that she was going to get drunk. and blah, blah, blah. So much fun, man. These guys are not afraid to make fools of themselves. And, uh, hey, talking to these people that are really kind, you know, they're from a small town. And I'm, like, trying to talk to them. Hey, where can you get a pizza at 1 o'clock in the morning? They're like, this town is shut down, man. You can't get anything in this town anymore. It's closed. The nearest town is another 40 miles away that way. And you, they have a gas station maybe that is open 24 hours. But... This town is shut down. Thank you. Have a good night. Right now. 
Right here, you're about to see some of the most irritating stuff. All you band guys, you know, as the audience is leaving, a lot of them have critiques or things they want to say about the band. And I've tried through the years. This is what these gig logs are about because I know there's some of you band guys out there that are going to completely understand what I'm going to say right here. But part of being in a band or whatever is figuring out how to talk to people because you want to take everything personally. And you have to learn how to just take it and, and be nice, you know. And I watch guys around me figure this out. And I've messed up, trust me. My first few years of being a band guy or whatever, I messed up bad. That's why people didn't like me. Because I would just get mad or whatever. But I've learned how to speak to people even though they're not saying the nicest things about you. They don't realize what they're saying. They're just saying what they're saying. They're saying how they feel, right? So anyway, you're about to see some of that right here. And all of you band people out there, how would you handle this situation? I know that I wasn't getting mad. I was having fun with that. I thought it was hilarious. But check this out and tell me how you would handle this. <laughs> Here we go. There it is. Now the real shit begins. No to the hotel, get some sleep, and then we're going to head out in the morning. Wyatt's dumbass is going to be wanting to sleep in. But I'm going to try to get everybody on the bus by 10. 10 o'clock in the morning. See, this is the fun part right here. This is how we earn the money right here. I know that because you are like old guys. Yep, like, we're all old. Like music. Yep, we're old bastards. Yeah. And then you found some young guy that likes to sing. Well, he's not that damn young. Jesus well, Christ. he's maybe 50. He's 40, 40 like yeah. three. You guys are pretty good. <laughs> hey, thank you. We're pretty good. Do you hear that? We're old guys. Yeah, we're, we're old pretty guys. good for old guys. See, we, Pender loves us. At first, the music was too loud. Couldn't too hear loud. the singer. Too fucking loud. Well, who wants to hear the singer? But Well, I didn't know what you were playing. <laughs> Heavy were metal. Heavy metal. All right, this pisses me off. Ah, Jesus. Left my sunglasses somewhere. I don't have them anymore. All right, so it's the it's the next day. I'm going to look for coffee. Now, when we got done with the gig, we went back to the hotel, and on the way back, we asked, you know, where can we get something to eat? And there's that gas station right next to the hotel we're staying at there, and I thought it was a gas station, but it ends up that that thing is a full grocery store. It's just they close at 10 o'clock at night. Had they been open, <laughs> had they been open when we got done playing the night before, we would have raided that place. We'd have got pizza. We'd have bought more alcohol. We'd have been up until at least 4 or 5 in the morning. I guarantee it. But good thing they weren't open. We went right to bed. Well, I did. I went right to bed. Roger and I had to share a room, which was weird. Nothing against Roger, but sharing a room with a man is odd. Uh, but anyway, we went to bed, got up early. I was up early. Here I am. I'm looking for coffee here. I'm going to let this roll through. Here we go. It's time to go find coffee. I'm gonna go to Cubby's community store here. Let's see if we can't get some uh, coffee. Yeah, the, that's the local gas station here. Look at it. They're everywhere. Freaking AC DC tribute bands are everywhere. And so are the country rock bands. Alright. Well, this is gonna be a Large. No, more. no, you know what? I got it off. Thank you. It, yeah, I finally worked it and got it off of there. All right, I have to explain this part. Uh, I bought a pair of sunglasses because I lost mine. I have 20,000 pairs now, but that day, I the, the pair I had, I left them on the stage or something. Like when we did our idiot walk, we forgot they were sitting up on the gooseneck or something. So I lost them. And the next day was sunny. And I was pissed at myself that, you know, my aviators, because I'm real picky about what kind of sunglasses I'll wear and which ones I won't. Um, I'm, I'm usually wearing mirrored ones, but I figured for this one, uh, I'd wear my, my brand new uh, Docker sunglasses. Anyway, that lady uh, had seen that I bought a new set of, you know, set of sunglasses and they had the stupid sticker thing on the, on the arm and you can't get it off and they're super stuck on there. And she saw me fighting with it. So she was so sweet. She came over and asked if I needed help getting them off. I need a pair of scissors. I ended up getting them off the sunglasses, but it left that sticky residue on the arm. I hate that. And then my hair gets stuck in it and I say, son of a, and then after a while it wears off. But anyway, 
I'm just glad I have a pair of sunglasses. And this lady was nice enough to ask if I needed help getting a tag off of it. That's how Pender, Nebraska is. Take note, Davenport. Thank you very much. Well, you know which way I'm going. Ow. <laughs> Have a night. Thank you. They're everywhere, these trucks. These dudes in trucks. Nebraska. Let's see. Here we go. Final taste test here. Pinner, Nebraska. Coffee. Damn, that's pretty good. Because it's walking distance from the hotel room. But hey, coffee's coffee. It's hot, tastes like coffee, good stuff. It's gonna wake me up. I got the extreme caffeine, so I'm ready to rock. I can probably jog home. <sighs> anyway, everybody's so kind. So kind. Yep. Quad Cities, Downport Island. About five hours away. Yeah. <laughs> A bumpy five. A bumpy five hours, man. A belly shaking five <laughs> hours. All right, so we ended up back at the store because by the time the rest of the losers in this band woke up, uh, I had already had my coffee and I was ready to go. I woke their asses up. I was knocking on their doors. Doot, 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 doot. Let's get out of here. I want to get home. I had friends coming over for a cookout later. So I had to be home at a certain time. They were bringing steaks over. We were going to have a good time. So the party's over. Let's get home. But uh, long drive, five hours of bellies bouncing, and uh, here we go. Well, that was the last sighting of the band Dirt Road Rockers. They're heading back from Nebraska. Brian was working on his vlog and didn't see the fucking deer run out in front. Gorgeous out there. There's Adventureland over there. Doesn't look that impressive when you're close to it. Shower gas at five. Your shower is now ready. Please and proceed to shower. My shower's again. ready. There you go. Ooh, they got a kiss hat down there. It's a good thing I'm grown up. I'd probably buy it. Your shower is now ready. Please proceed to shower 10. Your shower is now ready. Please proceed to shower 10. You know, if I could pull one of these off, that'd be a, I look like a tip. I look like a penis. Hey, Wyatt. Second coffee of the day. About to go down. Do you think I'm kidding? Second coffee of the day. Yep, gotta grab my sunglasses before I forget them. Here we go. That's what it looked like outside of the uh, rear view there. So I'm driving a bus and an 18-foot trailer all the way back from Nebraska. That was fun. <laughs> you have to really make decisions about your lane position and stuff and how soon you can get over. That was a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, that was Pender, Nebraska. We're going to move right along because we have three more shows to talk about. I know this is going to be long. I'm telling you, this is going to be a long one. But hey, this is the only way I can get caught up. I'm not going to do just one show. If I did that... It'd be Christmas time, and I'd still be talking about the 4th of July shows. Trying to get them all in here. So now we're headed to Clive, Iowa, to play a place called Miss Kitties. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun, doesn't it? We're on our way to Algona, really. So some of these, I don't get a whole lot of footage. We're going to run through. They're really fast. We're, Miss Kitties is one of them. So this won't be that long. Here we go. This is Miss Kitties. <laughs> Fucking drive this thing. What, we got some drama going on in here? What the You wanna drive me? He's booking right along there. <laughs> See what the first thing he says is here when I don't open the door. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I said, where are we at, Mama? What town though, I wonder? Coralville. Okay, so we're not that far. We're like an hour away still. Get some coffee. Oh. Gentlemen. I like looking at all these. Seeing what happens in these little towns. The singer likes this stuff. Fucking weirdo. See here. Uh, damn it, got packets of sugar, man. Piss me. Bass player is grumpy. I just asked him. Jerry is grumpy. Got a goddamn piece of pizza. <laughs> I said, "Oh, you getting pizza? Huh? You got yourself a piece?" He like, "Yeah." <laughs> I was like, "Well, hey, where's this place we eat at? Why it says we're gonna eat up there?" I don't know. I've never been there. He's grumpy, man. Fill the cup. Let's go. There's nothing worse if you're traveling than a grumpy bass player <clears throat> on the bus. But maybe he wasn't grumpy. Maybe he's just tired of me. I don't know. But anyway, I get this cup of coffee. Here's the sad part. You ready for the sad part? That cup of coffee that I waited so long for and I popped all the little packets and did it all perfect. I hate, by the way, having to rip packets. They should have something you can pour sugar. I'm a sugar addict, so let me pour it in there. I don't want to rip packets like a normal person that puts like one in there. No, I need like 10 in mine. Okay, so don't mess around with the stupid packets. That I got to rip four at a time and look like an idiot in there. Anyway, by the time I make that coffee... And I get it all started on my ready, and I pay for the thing, and I'm talking to the cashiers. Oh, thank you. Yeah, from we're from Davenport, whatever. Heading to gigs. Yeah, small talk. Head out to the uh, bus. Get you know, I'm driving, so I open the door and I go to set it in the console, and I bump something, and the cup squeezes. <laughs> And I pop the lid off of it, and then I'm pouring hot coffee on my arm, and then I freak out and jerk like this and throw the coffee everywhere all over the driver's seat. I'm pouring basically the entire something this big into the driver's seat and all over the floor and the console right there in the driver's seat of the bus. So everybody gets to smell coffee all the way to Miss Kitty's, and whoever is in the driver's seat gets to wear coffee on the back of their leg and butt all the way to Miss Kitty's. So that was a fun little trip right there. I'm sure the band was real happy about that uh, accident. But hey, things happen. Just happened to me that time. Nice. Nothing's happening, honey. Oh, there, finally. Made it to the Airbnb, man. This is pretty cool in here. Dude, fucking, yeah, guess so. <laughs> what the hell, this is like a zen room in here. Whoa, man. This is going to be cool. Look at that, man. TV. Yeah. Couch is nice. Yeah. You already got your spot. I can, I can, I can sleep on this. Yeah, me too. So when I was editing this part of the vlog and, you know, how Bob's, like, getting on the couch feeling like, hey, man, this is nice, you know? I felt like that part of uh, Step Brothers where they're like, you know, we got room. We can do some activities, you know, all that stuff. I don't know. It just seems silly the way we're so excited about a airbnb it's just it's kind of cute here we go let's check it out a little airbnb action hell yeah this is probably locked nope access to the basement they got a gym down there all right man see that's what's up to me that's funny there's a ball there's an exercise ball down there so i said they have a gym down there that's my kind of humor right there but nobody's gonna understand it because I wanted them to come look and then see that there's an exercise ball at the bottom of the steps. And then I was, so that's why I'm not a comedian, I guess. And they all have fans in it, man. Nice. Cool. Yeah, man, we're all right. Which one are we taking? Which one did you take, bub? Me and Bob can take this one. Okay. You got you need a hand with that? Yeah. Yes, I just asked if she needed a hand with that after she was at the top of the steps because I am a gentleman, people. Okay. I knew that once she got it to the she was working to get it at the top. She wasn't if I helped her earlier, she'd have felt like she was a damsel in distress or whatever. And I figured she got it to the top and I would give her a hand rolling it the extra six feet to get it into our room there because I'm a gentleman. But other than that, uh good job, Danelle. That was a heavy ass suitcase. Well, it by the way. In my defense, that thing was loaded with all of her 
curling irons and flat irons and hair dryers and makeup and, 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 and I wanted to watch her carry it up the steps. God, why'd you? You know this so has. A, you know this has a handle, right? I guess we'll take this one. Five point eight miles. Thirteen minutes. Wow. That ain't bad, huh? Nope. Try, try to get something close. Yeah, I was getting here. Okay, dude. I don't care what Penny says. You're all right. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> here we go. Yes, sir. Miss Kitties. We're in Clive? Yep. All right. Well, here we go. Hey there. Hmm. It's the first time I've seen it too, so. Miss Kitties. Here we go. That's it, baby. Yeah, let's see how what kind of fun he looks we'll get walking in here. Here we go. All right. Hi there. Hello, how are you? We're the Dirt Road Rockers. You are? Yeah, and we're pulled up to the back door there. Okay. Do we have to get completely nude, or is this just <laughs> top off? Just top. All right, thanks, man. Again, look, I'm probably one of the funniest dudes in the world. I mean, we can all just admit that, right? <laughs> I mean, when I go into the bar and the, and I ask him if we have to get completely nude, that's just top-notch humor. Oh, they got stripper poles. I'm gonna get in trouble tonight. Here we go. My son would love that. Yeah. You bring two kicks, but you only got you got the double kick mallet. It's all about the mic one drum, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Makes it easier. That's the big time when you bring one just for looks. Right. All right, so we've got our ear show loaded in, ready to go. Now I gotta go get the girls from the Airbnb. I haven't had a chance. Uh, I haven't had a chance to sound check or anything. But uh, and I need to change. I need to bring shit for the band. We're a little behind schedule. We're slow getting here, fucking around. So anyway, I'm heading to go to the Airbnb and get the bitches. That one's very nice to say. Get our very lovely women. I'm gonna go this way. So I gotta use my map. See you a little bit. All right. So this part of the vlog gets kind of dicey because I had to drive. I think it was a good 25, 30 minutes back to where the Airbnb was. Since we were setting up at the venue, we left the girls back at the the Airbnb to get ready and all that stuff. Uh, so when I say, by the way, that this is an ears show, what I mean by that is all we have to do is bring our inner monitors and our guitars and whatever we have on stage. We don't have to bring a PA with the speakers and the amps and set up the lights and everything like that. They have that there. It's an ears show, so all we do is bring our ears so that we can hear ourselves and we can play our instruments. That's and the drums, you know. So that's what an ear show is. So it didn't take us very long to set up. I went back to go get the girls and I pull up. Okay, this bus, <laughs> this bus is not the best on bumps and stuff, and it's not the best, you know, to get through town. It's a bus. So I'm driving it across town back to the Airbnb. I pull it into the, the driveway there and I park it. And I get out the door, I you know, because it has the doors that open on the side to let people in or whatever, like a school bus. Didn't check if it was locked or unlocked or whatever. It was locked. But my driver's door, I made sure that was unlocked. Left the bus running because I wanted the air on still. Got out of the bus, went in to get the girls, got the girls outside with their stuff, ready to go. And I pull on that driver door and it is locked. And so is the door to let people in. And I'm like, what? I know I didn't lock the door. I know I didn't. So I'm thinking, well, what are we going to do now? I'm pulling on the side door, trying to see if I can get my hand in enough to try to, I couldn't, there's no getting in the bus. Okay. And then, uh, Sam Wyatt's girlfriend, luckily she went around to the back of the bus. She was going to climb up. <laughs> Her idea was she was going to climb up on top of the bus and see if she can get through the emergency exit hatch to get in. But going around the back, she just checked on a whim check the back door of the bus and you know in the bus there's a there's a tv mounted to the back so i thought that door was sealed shut she pulled on the door it opened up and she's like i'm in and she got in and, and unlocked the stuff and we got in we got back to the venue that would have been really bad being in des moines locked out of the bus bus running everybody else is at the venue i'm at the b and b 
uh, show's going to be late because we can't even get the bus back there. I can't get back there. We had had to call a taxi or an Uber or something to get back to the venue while the bus is running in the... Anyway, this thing could have went sideways very quickly. But luckily, we got in the bus and we got back to the venue and we started to play the show. So thanks, Sam, for finding the back door. And actually, I wouldn't have tried it. I, I was just in my mind. I was like, it's locked. There's no way that that thing's going to open. But it did. I left that part in there because this show is one of them. Okay, you know, we talked about the Rust Belt and the big concert, big rock star. We go to Miss Kitty's and the show is just, there's nobody there. And if the people that are there don't care about us, they want to line dance. Okay, because I, I should have known that when we were setting up our stuff that they were giving line dancing lessons on the dance floor. Nothing against the venue at all. I guess it's just a dead time of year for that venue because it's in the middle of summer. Uh, usually in the fall and whatever, they pack the place and, and they want us back. But that night, they basically just said, why don't you guys pack it up? Like we were supposed to play until, I don't I remember what it was, like midnight one, something like that. But they at some point just decided there's nobody here why don't you guys we'll pay you your full price you know go ahead and just pack it up and and uh so we're basically being told to stop playing you know like you guys go ahead and just stop and uh leave that's how that show was going so that's miss kitties <laughs> how does this happen That's like in the 60s. I remember watching Johnny and I play, dude, on Sundays. <laughs> Fuck. Who was the guy? That was, there was some good fucking white running back, bulldozer fucking. Uh, John Riggins. John Riggins, good one. Yeah, yeah. You remember Riggins? Oh, yeah. I'm um, a Redskin fan, man. Who was Larry Zonka? Kurt, might see Sam's nose ring. Yeah. I'm uh, somewhere. No. Find a needle in it. Uh, there's that right you there. You did so good. Jesus. Oh, I told you we'd That's find somewhere. it. You didn't find it? Jesus. I told you we would find it. Oh, that looks really cold. Jeez. <laughs> you didn't find it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Smooth. Oh, smooth. All right. Le leaving the bed. bed and this is a leaving the Airbnb. I don't know what they're called. What is the air? Right? What is the air? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Clear. Go that way. We're good, dude. Bring her out. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys want to ride? Sure, man. We got a lot of candy in here. Woo <laughs> we got a lot of CPAP machines. All right, again. This is top-notch humor. If I have to tell you guys that that's where you laugh right there, then uh, you don't know me very well. Above and beyond, dude. Kevin Hart, watch out, dude. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Dirt Road Rockers. What's up, man? Good morning. <laughs> All right, so that was Miss Kitties. Now we're on the road to Algona, Freedom Fest. Okay, this is this is what it's all about. This is the highlight of the weekend. We're going to Algona Freedom Fest, and uh, we're playing the big stage right in front of, uh, damn it, ah, Tim McGraw. I don't know. What the hell was his name? Who are we opening for on that one? Who in the hell? What was his name? What was that country dude's name that we opened for? Trace Atkins. Uh, all right. I, I don't I forgot. I forget. They're country guys. I don't know. I don't know any of them. So Trace Atkins. We're opening for Trace Atkins. Direct support, by the way, on the big stage. And we're expecting a lot of people, like four or 5,000 people. And we're on our way to Algona now. And I don't know if we should just play the video or what, but 
okay there's some missing stuff between what you just saw and then getting to algona because there was a time i don't know we stopped in several different places we were trying to find something to eat when we left the bed and breakfast we were like let's go eat let's go eat breakfast somewhere and we stopped in this one town i don't know what it was but we get out of the bus because we think we're going to an ihop but the ihop has a 20 minute wait so that pisses us all off uh and so we decide you know what we ain't waiting for this we're gonna go across the way. There's a Panera over there, and look at that. And then and Wyatt and Sam they take off towards the Culvers that's across the street and down. And Bobby, Danelle, and I are standing there like, well, what are we gonna do? Jerry goes into the Panera, gets himself something. I don't know what he he disappears. Danelle and I are, what do you want? What do you want? I don't know. What do you want? And Bobby's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not in the mood for that. We went into Panera. Bobby does not. He doesn't understand Panera. It's too bready come out of there and we're like where are we gonna go here and we don't want to go all the way we don't want to go to culver's we just had that and recently and then so we see this place across the street it's called tasty taco and i'm thinking <laughs> i mean that was called tasty taco we should we should probably go to tasty taco it says tasty right on the side let's go check it out so bobby agrees we go over to the tasty taco worst decision i ever made by the way and if you ever see me in person please ask me about the tasty taco uh story that ends in a porta potty i will not talk about it on this show because <laughs> maybe i will i don't know we'll get there so we ate at the tasty taco and then we get back on the bus and we are headed to algona so here we go this is the algona video let's, let's have some fun this ain't going well Elevation. Yeah, I was born up in that area. We played five last night. We played on the What are you guys doing? Oh, man. What time is it? I will play like Country. All right, man. <laughs> I play myself. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I play. And where'd you came to church? Okay, I better get one with him. Bye. Well, it's just me and you, Jer. <laughs> Here we go again, some other truck stop, Flying J somewhere. Shit. Tired. We're here. Somewhere. Perry, that's all face the earth. Huh? <laughs> you liking it? Wow. Dig it. Get Jerry. <laughs> what would we do without Jerry though? I don't know. Fall apart. You get a lot of DUIs. We fall apart. What in the hell is happening over here? You yep. Missed all Pull that out of here by crack. It is the a whole shot of Oh, she's dancing. Did I get that? I think I did. <laughs> I got fuck Biden sign. <laughs> wow. Oh, I don't even think Biden would fuck him. I don't know. Um, We're at the very first gate. We're at the very first gate. Yep. Gate three. Oh. Okay. We'll do. All right. Thanks, you. Oh, they're waving at you there, buddy. Gate three. Gate three. Yeah. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> We're in trouble, dude. You this... said I'm gonna stand. Wear what you want, say what you want, do what you want. Damn, there's a lot of tents down there. Can I do? A lot of what? Tents. What's his name? Johnny Hawkins is probably down there. Oh, yeah, he's down there somewhere. Look at that. Oh, wow. It's like Woodstock. <laughs> this is crazy. crazy. Right. It's nuts. Okay, so. Wyatt was giving us the rundown because I had to ask the question, like, is there any security here? And he said, no, there's no police. They're there. They're on the perimeter of this thing, but you don't see them. The Fest, Freedom Fest, they don't want you to see that there's cops anywhere. Okay. Because they'd be in danger, I think. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, these people seem pretty peaceful. I didn't see one fight at all, but I know that there's a lot of nudity. And I, I was told that the Sons of Silence were there and to be kind of careful about them because they might follow your girl around or whatever. I don't know. I, it, it seemed a little scary because there's no security. And I, what I'm thinking is, I mean, look how beautiful I am. I mean, can you imagine 
Like I could get attacked by some biker broads and security wouldn't get there to save me for at least 20 minutes. And I, that just scared me. It scared me. Goddamn Penny. Sorry. You're asking me if I'm getting everything here. I was getting it already. <laughs> you I was already there. <laughs> this is one of the craziest places. Be nice. You want me to give you any of that? Is that vehicle in the way? Looks like. So that's our stage, huh? Dragging the trailer where it wow. needs to be. Man, what a production, hey, Daddy. What are you doing? Isn't that fucking nuts? <laughs> We're getting the treatment. <laughs> Look at you. I'll ask. All right. Good. I know the opening of the band has had a sound check already. Right. And I think we're kind of setting up between them and yeah, now we're talking. Come on, buddy. <laughs> we are the roadies. Look at that drum set. Look at this, the same fucking one as yours. Why you don't use the split on that? No? Okay, so what you just saw right there was a discussion that most bands have when they're stacked up. So there was a band before us and then Dirt Road Rockers and then Trace Atkins. And Trace Atkins, obviously, he gets the whole footprint of the stage. His stuff is there, set, ready to go. Don't touch it. Okay. And then there's a band in front of them that's a local or, you know, a band jammer is what they're called. And they're going to set up in front of trace atkins stuff so now there's a set of drums there and their amps and all that stuff and then basically the question that jerry was asking right there is hey should we just go ahead and use your drum kit because it'd make it a lot easier because it'd already be sound checked it'd be ready to go that way we don't have to tear that down get all the mics you know torn down and then set our drums up re-mic recheck all that stuff and uh so that's kind of what he was asking there and that drummer was smart uh, and he said, no, I would I would prefer that you guys use your own drums and re-sound check. They had to play at the stage across the way. So they played on the big stage, and then we played. But while we were playing, they were moving their equipment down to the other stage that was across the way so they could play after Trace Atkins was done. And then they played until 3 in the morning or something. So anyway, that's what we were talking about right there. We're trying to get the opening band to let us use their drums. I don't know if Bobby would have used them or not, but it, it have made it simpler. That's what that conversation was. And uh, we ended up using Bobby's drums, which is great because ended up working out really good. This backstage stuff is so fun. I walk around the corner, as you saw in the video there, when I walked around the corner and there's the guitar tech stations, you know, and you have five or six guitars stacked in there and then a table with the toolbox and all this stuff where the guitar tech's going to take care of the guitar player for Trace Atkins stuff. There's two stations on each side, you know, this guy over here and then this guy over here. And I had a really cool conversation with the actual guitar player on the right side of the stage uh, that plays with Trace Atkins. He was 69 years old. And he's retiring this year. And it was a great conversation because it seemed like, you know, he's been through it all. They're on the big tour bus, you know. He's been doing it most of his life. And it was just fun to talk to somebody that's been in the game that long, touring around, just being a guitar player for Trace Atkins or whoever he's playing for. It was really cool to talk to him. I might talk about that a little bit later. But here we go. Back to Algona here to see what this looks like. So what was it? What what? Brian? Brian Miner? Yeah, it's me. Mike O'Neill. All right, so here we are at Freedom Fest. Anybody on the bus? All right, but uh, here we are at Freedom Fest. It's fucking wild already. We got our stuff staged, ready to go. I'm gonna have a beer real quick. Ooh, we got some watermelon in here. I might have some hydrate here. But so this is the big show. You know what I mean? Uh, 
the the headliner Trace Trace Atkins, his guitar guys are all playing their own amps. They're playing real amps, and uh, I got that documented as to what they're playing. But so these old, you know, these dudes, old school dudes, they don't want to play through them campers and them guitar modelers or whatever. And plus, they have semis, as you can see, the semis. That's a semi right there several semis here that they can haul all their stuff and they have crews that unload it for them and all that stuff so why would they care what they bring right they didn't bring their goddamn kitchen sink with them but anyway on the bus gonna have a couple beers the first band's gonna play and then we're gonna go out there and tear it up so freedom fest 2023 Okay, so I tried to make sure that I got all the nudity covered up or at least mosaicked in some of these. Oh, I paused right on a spot that's not. I apologize for that. But I, I just wanted to point out Johnny Hawkins here uh, is at the show. And, I, you know, I, I didn't know him until I did a radio show for for iRock 93.5 here in town. Did an old school metal show. And he was known as El Gringo. So he's a cool dude. Later on in the night, he was an Amish dude. I don't know. Anything can happen at Freedom Fest, apparently, as you're going to find out. This is wild, wild stuff here. So, And I apologize to some of the people out there that don't like swearing and don't like all this naughty stuff that happens. But, hey, this is rock and roll, and you never know what's going to happen. And, uh, hey, you came backstage. You're here. So whatever happens back here stays back here. All right? Why do you have clothes on, Johnny? And the cool kids over there are having the clothes on. <laughs> That's later, man. <laughs> hey, uh, Dave. Yeah. Buddy Dave there. Cool. He owns Dirty Whore Garage. Oh, yeah? You want to rock a t-shirt while you're playing? I don't know. Uh, yeah. If, it's if you, it's, uh, got I'll cut the logo. sleeves off of it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah if you, you, want, if you get the sleeves off of it, I wear like an XL. XL? Yeah. All right. We'll rock it. We'll, All right. We'll rip them off for you. Okay. 10x, yeah. 1x, yeah. 1x, just extra large. Some people are, some people are celebrating freedom a little more than others. It's not good either. I was zoomed in on Lisa's boobs. I apologize for that. I had it zoomed. Sorry about it. Penny. I'm out. I was still gonna look at Penny, will you go get your golf cart and move it? It's too close to the to the butt plug machine. If I see any anybody on the front of a golf cart tonight, <laughs> <I have one. laughs> Well, smoking butt and I had your butt in it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Commerce. Oh, that got kind of dicey right there for a second. We'll just go back right there and we'll re-edit that. Okay, so I get up to the pulled pork there and the lady behind the counter recognizes me. I'm sorry if I don't know who she is or whatever. I didn't recognize them. But we're in Algona. I always feel that everybody's a stranger. You know, I was surprised at Johnny Hawkins that I knew him, uh, but I always figure they're just from a different world. She said, hey, you do that video log and uh, we're going to be on your video log with the pulled pork. And I'm thinking, yeah, all right, cool, man. Somebody watches and they know who I am. I got this sandwich and macaroni and cheese and beans and whatever. And, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you what I thought of it. But smoking butts, man, they whoop ass. They're from here, I think. They're from the quads, I think. Um but yeah, she knows what I do. And I was surprised because I paid full price. So I bought my wife one and me one. I'm waiting for the day that somebody recognizes me and they give it to me for free. You know what I mean? But anyway, I paid full price and it was well worth it. It was delicious. Killer. Killer pulled pork again. The beans were real smoky tasting. My wife wasn't real keen on the smokiness of them, but I dug it. Macaroni and cheese was killer. It, that was a great meal right there. And my wife usually doesn't eat big before a gig or something like that. She ate that entire plate. Not that one, but hers. She ate everything. It was delicious. So good job smoking butts. Okay. Well, sorry about this. Um, okay. So yeah, we just rolled right into that, didn't we? 
I apologize. I don't know. I paused it here. I hope there's nothing sticking out that I should have. I don't want to get kicked off YouTube for this, but yeah, there's a lot of bare butts. Okay, so when we got there, when we were pulling in, I think they were having like the biker chick booby contest or something. But by the time we got our stuff on stage and got down to the other stage that was down there, they were doing the biker butt contest, the male biker butt contest. And and a lot of people were showing off their little things and, and all that stuff. It was Freedom Fest, people. I mean, that's what they do. So that's what this part is. A uh, bunch of bikers, you know, that's what they get together. These big, tough bikers, they get together and they do this. So. <laughs> Oh, didn't you know we have to do this later, right? Oh, that's right. That's yeah. how we make the money. I know. Right. Bobby, what do you think, buddy? I'm ready to get on stage. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby was really uncomfortable. Like his wife wanted to go down and check it out, and my wife and all the girls wanted to go down there and look at this biker butt thing. And so we're obliging, you know, we're not too cool for school or whatever. We'll go down and see this crazy stuff. Um, yeah, it was uncomfortable. A lot of glitter everywhere. Everybody ended up with glitter on them. We never touched anybody. It was odd, you know. There's a lot of bare butts and wieners and glitter. It was really. <sighs> I might need therapy after this thing. Anyway, Freedom Fest, here we go. We're in it now. We're in it now. I'm ready to get out today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, that's my move. Thank you, sir. All right. Yeah, this is for all the gearheads out there that want to know what's happening behind the scenes, and this is all their guitar stuff. This is crazy. They have a road case with a vacuum cleaner in it and some cleaning supplies and stuff. I thought that was hilarious. You'd never think of that. Like, what do you think's in that cabinet? Oh, Hoover. <laughs> Whatever. So, yeah, they're using real amps. Old school. So that's the other guitar player's uh, tech station right there. A bunch of cool guitars. Probably the bass bass tech and the, another guitar tech over there. So uh, as you can see, there's probably basses in there and tellies and acoustics and whatever. So, so cool, man, to see that. You know, you just put a lid on that and roll that thing right in the semi, just like that. And the band you hear in the background, that's Jammer. They're up there playing a bunch of Skinner and stuff. And later on in the big tent, or the little tent down there, they were playing a bunch of cool, like, Boston and stuff. Crazy. There's my guitars sitting in the mix of uh, the Real Tech station there. So here we go. I just want to let you know that uh, there's going to be a lot of performance on this show because this was really cool. So I'm going to let a little bit of it play for you. This is the show we did in Algona. It was a lot of fun. We felt like big rock stars. The whole show was on YouTube. I didn't like make a big announcement about it, but the whole show is up there. It's all camera audio, which sucks. I wish we'd have recorded it somehow and I could mix it and make it sound good. Sounds like shit, really. I mean, I apologize for the, that, but the, it's cool angles. And the front camera that you'll see, because I brought my camera like I always do for my vlogs, and then Jerry had brought a GoPro on his side. And so we had them two angles. And then Penny out in the audience, Jerry's wife, she was filming with her phone. And I always tell her, hold the phone sideways so that it's, you know, 916. What does she do? She's hitting it standing up like this. So it's straight up. So you got the little sliver that goes in the middle of the screen. And I've got to try to zoom it in and do all that stuff to make it work. But it doesn't matter. Thanks, Penny, for getting all that footage for us. It looks really cool cut in like that. And uh, great show to do that at. Check it out. This is Algona. Uh, some of that show right here.
So there you go, man. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I think we played for an hour and a half. So there's an hour and a half long show on YouTube of that whole thing. Like I said, I wish the audio was better, but it's still really fun to watch. Uh, it started, it's just like a bar gig. I mean, we were playing a huge festival there, but we started a little earlier than we thought we were going to start. Trace wanted to go on a little sooner. Uh, I'm calling him by his first name now because we're best buddies. But anyway, Trace Atkins wanted to go on a little sooner. Um, so we had to go on a little earlier. So it was still daytime. The lights weren't really doing much. It didn't look that cool. But man, we played right on the, you know, we, we, we played right before sunset. So we played a few songs that was still bright out. And then the crowd was kind of sparse. And then as it filled in and it got dark and then the lights came on, and it looked really cool. And by the end of the show, man, it was like people over the edge of the hill just festival you saw at the end there it was just it was unreal summertime outside shows it was a full moon great people great night great food great time so i'll go to i want to do that one again that was a lot of fun so here we go oh by the way trace atkins i don't know who these guys are i'm not a country guy but we're opening for trace atkins my wife and uh sam Wyatt's girlfriend got a picture with Trace. He's a big, tall dude. I mean, he's tall. And I didn't know what his thing was. You know, every country singer has a thing. And he has some good... Honky Tonk, but Donkey Donk, I guess. You guys would know. I don't know. But he did the thing where he, he does that really deep voice, right? So he hits these low notes that just shakes the world, right? So I'm like, wow. You'll see some of that here. It's wild, man. Trace Atkins, whatever. <laughs> You hear that? It's like, <laughs> fun, fun times, man. Fun times. It's Lisa's birthday. That's Bob's wife. I'm going to pause it here for a second because I want to say something about Bob. I know I, I get all like sentimental and stuff but look i've been on a bus with that dude enough i've been in this band like three or four months now and I've done a lot of traveling with him and i've talked with him a lot and you know there's certain male figures that come into your life that you know you respect you know they and not maybe not every single thing about everything but when it comes to being a man and being married and being loyal and being a family man and all that stuff uh from what i know I can tell you this, that he never says anything bad about his wife. He's never like a dog out in public. You know, he, 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 when he's not around his wife, he acts the same as if he's around her. Uh, one thing I respect, I, and it was crazy because this show is one of the first ones that I've been in the band that Lisa's been at. Now, she's been to a couple, but most of the time she's not there. 
and we had done a few shows here and bob was you know it was her birthday and bob was missing her and she they drove up penny and and lisa drove up from the quad cities to be at the algona show they didn't go to miss kitty's but he's standing here right right there holding his wife and this man they've been married since she was 18 i think i think that's the story you know they've been through a lot they've been together they've been together a long time he quit playing drums for a while to raise his daughters and and he's back at it now but that man right there was was uh he was crying and i i just think it's a beautiful thing you know to see a man and a woman that love each other like that and uh he was happy to see her and she was happy to see him and they had a good night and he was holding her and he was crying and I was watching a man be a man. Bobby Boyd, you're you're a good dude, man. I'm having some watermelon. Yep. After the gig. Have some. It's delicious, isn't it? Yeah, cornfields and country band cover tour buses. Cover band tour I can't even talk. You know what? A hot ham and cheese sounds awesome right now with the fries and stuff. Another day, another Casey's. Jeez, man, we do a lot of Casey's in Iowa. Is there a Casey's on every exit? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Look at that. They got the pizza rack loaded. Oh, yeah. Loaded, I said. So that was Algona. Okay, we've got one left on this gig log, man. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thanks for putting up with this. I know, it's a long one, right? What are we? It says we're an hour and a half in already. But this is the only way I can do it to get caught up. I have to do like four shows per gig log. And next week, I'll try to knock another four out. And then maybe we'll be kind of caught up. So one more show here. And uh, Algona was wild. That was a lot of fun. A big show. So, so that's what's crazy about being in a band like this is one night you could play at a place that's asking you to quit nobody's there nobody cares it's just a lost cause you know it's embarrassing and then the very next night you're playing in front of five thousand people they're screaming it's crazy and you feel great so you know it's peaks and valleys in this thing you know i've played to five people i've played to no people i've played to five thousand people they're all the same to me, man. I'm having a ball. I love playing my guitar. I love playing, traveling, hanging out. I love it all. So thanks for being here with me. We're going to do one more show here. This is Yardarm and Dubuque. Packed. Packed bar. Again, we have to like seduce the people you'll see here. I, this is why there's going to be a lot of live footage in this. And the reason there is a lot of live footage in this is because I want you to watch from our perspective what it's like to watch the audience go from uninterested, basically, you know, and sparse to having a few drinks, loosening up a little bit, and then pretty soon there's some dancers, and then there's the people that are already way too drunk pretty early, right? And then then you've got, at the end of the night, just a madhouse, right? So I, I just want you to see what it looks like from our perspective playing a gig like this. So let's get this up here. Yardarm and Dubuque, here we go. Just can't wait to get on the bus again. This time we're bringing special guests. That's the band mascot. Yeah, man. Because just like the band, she takes a shit every now and again. Okay, so uh, that burger was good. It was good. It didn't beat the one in Green Bay, but it was better than some other ones. So it's like right there in the upper, like the top, top five burgers that I've had up in the top. But I can tell you them cheese curds that my wife had, them are killer. And they have this like strawberry whatever jalapeno dip that oh oh, oh oh man stop it she ate them all she didn't give me one but last time i was there i had the cheese curds and they were delicious so i know they're really good but i decided to get fries this time like an idiot i should have got the cheese balls 
Uh, anyway, so here we go, yard arm. Uh, I'm being a little creative here. I'm going to show you what it must look like to be my guitar at every gig when I get it out of the case for the first time. Okay, so you gotta pay attention here. This is first set. This is what it's like. People are just like, I don't know what to do here. We're gonna walk off probably. I'm like, watch. They're like, ah, we should go sit down. We're not. This is noisy. I love playing this song. One of my favorite songs to play right here. All right, people are getting loosened up now. They're having some drinks, right? They're starting to get into it a little bit. Still the first set. I mean, we play long sets, about an hour, but uh, and they're starting to get into it. You know, the alcohol is flying and flowing and flying and flowing. They're starting to get out there and dance. Now, I spoke earlier about the people that are already too hammered. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, I'm going to make a bet that that lady right here that you see, uh, she probably passed out at about 1130. Uh, after throwing up uh, Burger King out the passenger side window of her car and her husband had to take her to get some water or something. I don't She's having a good time. Maybe not. I could be wrong. My bet is she passed out and her husband was like playing video games by midnight. <laughs> I'm having fun now. This girl right here could care less. Look at her. Look at. She is not interested in anything we have to offer. All right. Always be always be cautious of dudes that are wearing golf stuff like golf hats and golf shirts, golf shorts, and they get drunk. And as soon as they turn their hat backwards, it's on. If a golfer has their hat on backwards, get out of the way. Just get. They're gonna start kicking people, poking at people they don't know. It gets wild. That right there, folks, is my favorite dance move of all time. It is the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex guitar thing. It's it's where they hold their arms up like this, holding their drink in tight, and then they just kind of move their finger. I don't know if you can see this, but they're just kind of they're playing the guitar here and holding their drink here. You know, they're the same people that think the high notes on the guitar are way up there, and they're not up here, right? So when it gets the high parts, they play it like this when it's a high note. So that's the same thing that happens, and this guy's having a good time and. I don't blame them. We're a good band. And uh, it's summer. wipe your guitar down in the summertime when you're sweating like crazy especially me I, I took my guitar to tony carducci over there at the what is it pawn something i don't want to say the wrong name but it, at the pawn shop he works at he works on my guitars he strings them up and all that stuff i took my guitar in there and this is after probably four or five gigs outside sweating on them and i put it 
I opened the case, I put it up there, and I said, hey, what do you think, Tony, of these strings? Do you think they're they're ready to be replaced? And he, you know, to test them, he would just grab one and kind of pull up a little bit on it. Not much, just pull up on it a little bit, just see what the tension's like, see what they feel like. And he pulled the first one and went, pow, <laughs> and he busted it off. And then I grabbed one, I was like, pow, with no effort. They were ready to go, okay? So you always wipe your guitar down. And I guess I'm not wiping my guitar down good enough because I'm not getting all up in the saddle and stuff. You know, I haven't been playing for a while, and I forget that my sweat must be acidic or something because I sweat like acid or something because it just melts my strings. So I need to clean my guitar. I'll wipe it down every set, wipe the strings, clean them off, clean the bridge, all that stuff. Thanks, Tony, for putting up with my finger gunk. <laughs> I notice in front of me it's usually a bunch of guys that you know I'm the guitar player I guess the guys like to watch the guitar player if I was a singer I'd probably have the girls looking at me but I don't know the drummers always get the girls we all know that but they can't get to them because they're far that's why they put the drums so far back so that the chicks can't get them that's why but they put the guitar player up front because the girls don't want them you know it's just kind of get the guys and then the bass player he takes the other chunk of guys and then this, that separates everything so that the, he, the singer can see the girls you know I think that's how it works Here you'll see some people noticing that I'm filming. Like a lot of times I have my phone on a stand behind me and I'm just trying to get a shot from my vlog and stuff. And the people don't really notice. These people, you'll notice the people in the bottom left corner or whatever, the guy is going to notice that I have a phone recording and then he's going to nudge his buddy and let him know. You'll see. It's funny when they realize they're being recorded. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing a little fucking vlog here. Four pizzas. Four. I don't know who orders that. Sometimes the rain clouds follow me. <laughs> I just need a pop. Bang pow. Okay. Well, that was the last gig on the on this gig log. That was a yard arm. And yeah, I had some drinks that night. A few. Not a lot. Enough to make me kind of... I was tired to begin with. I mean, we played Miss Kitties and then Algona and then... We had Sunday off, and then Monday we played in Yard Arm. So I was still trying to catch up on sleep. I was tired. I had a few drinks. Uh, either way, uh, that was the end of the night, and Wyatt had pre-ordered four pizzas from Casey's that was 15 minutes away or whatever in uh, Dubuque there, and we picked up four. They weren't done when we got there, by the way. He gave them plenty of time, but there was only one lady working there, and between her working the register and smoking crack, she wasn't able to make all the pizzas for us on time so i don't know maybe the guy that was supposed to be back there making pizza he was outside smoking a joint i don't know what he's doing either way our pizza wasn't done we got them though they were delicious on the way home i burnt my face off with them they were fresh out of the nuclear reactor or whatever they cook them in and so i didn't uh really taste anything after my first slice but they seemed like they were probably pretty delicious and everybody else looked like they were enjoying them so uh, anyway 
rode home on the bus eating pizza, having a good time laughing. That was the last gig on this gig log. Look, I got four, I think four or five more gigs to get to. I want to thank everybody for being here watching these things. You know, it's a lot of work. Like I said, I had to carve out time to do this. And I, I do it because so many people dig it, right? And it's not millions. It's not thousands. It's couple hundred people okay and a couple hundred people dig these things and that's enough for me right now i don't know how many of these i'll do but i'm still taking footage and as long as you guys dig it and you comment on it and you keep it you know moving and make it relevant and make it fun to do i'll keep doing them so again brian minor gig log zero to a hundred miles an hour in a country rock cover band from the couch to the stage thanks for going along with me we'll see how long this lasts man I'm having a good time, though. Brian Minor Gig Log, episode 11. We'll see you next time. Peace. Ah!